Good morning, good morning. Upstairs, we know what's going on today. No carving today, no printing today. It's a soup stream, a soup stream. Okay, make a, make a call here. I'm standing on the third floor. The window is open to try and get some sense of a breeze in here. It's still hot in Tokyo. Here we are at night, 8 o'clock in the morning and it's 30 degrees up here. The window's open to try and get some kind of air here, but the rocks, air conditioning systems, can you hear it? Your call. Shall I close the window and steam to death but have a quieter stream? <laughs> or can we leave it open <laughs> and I get a little bit of breeze? Is it all right? I don't know. I have no idea how much background noise is there. For me, it's an awful, awful noise in my ear. But uh, I'm way louder than the noise outside, except when I'm not. All right. Okay. 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 We're, we're doing soup this morning. The soup is already cooked. It's in the cooler. I, did, I knew I wouldn't have time today because we have 36 long, big sheets to do today. You know how this goes. We will try and do this. We'll do one side. We'll flip it. We'll take it and hang it. We have a fabulous show and tell in, in readiness if it go, turns out that we have enough time. If we don't, we don't. I was waiting for someone to ask, is the paper out? Three packs of paper. This is like, hasn't happened in years. Ishikawa-san is already printing in her room. I pulled out the paper this morning at like 5.30. She's doing the Crow on Shrine Gate. Uh, who else is going to be here today? Rei-chan is here today. She's doing the Heron and Iris print, the tall one, the reproduction of a Hiroshige Tanzakuba. And Ayumi sent me an email last night, said, do you remember me? I'm Ayumi Sashiburi. I'm coming in to work on the Nikko print today. So they're all be going to be in there. At the moment, just one. Ishikawa sans here. The other, the other two, they will probably come during the stream. Then there will be a fourth person printing here during the day in the middle room. If she comes during the stream, she will say hello. You know who that is. Okay, let me get to work. This is not fresh size today. This was made on, when was it made? Friday? I don't remember, I'm sorry. Friday night. I made three liters, used about one liter, and this is the two liters. And I'm okay by keeping it over the weekend in the fridge. There's a limit to how long we can keep it. Too long, of course, there's a risk of mold and stuff. But uh, I think we're okay. In she goes. And we're going to use just over half of this today. We can never use up all of our stuff. If I needed two liters and only had two liters, I'd be in trouble because at the end of it, your brush wouldn't be dipping into anything. Should we tip it down a bit just for a sec so we can see what's going on here? The brush is sitting in there. Got to soften up the brush. Someone says, what happened after the stream with the guest wood box? He, he did leave them here. They're downstairs. He's coming back on a Wednesday. I forget what day it is. I've got no calendar here. It won't be another stream. He's coming. He's in Kyoto now. Rangaki might be here on the stream this morning. He can explain. He'll be dropping back in on the evening of, I guess it's Wednesday next week. Not this week, next week. And before that, I'm going to get some paper ready. And he and I are going to have a little quick printing session. But it won't be in a stream time. So maybe if he's cool, we'll video a little bit of it or something. If I don't forget. And then we can show you that in the next day stream, maybe. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Prince in Poland, they arrived already. Really good. Thank you very much. We're really, really not sure about the uh, shipping, you know. People order, we ship, and then like six weeks later, the person says, I didn't get it. Can there's something wrong, you know. How do I deal with all our wood trash? Well, the chips from my bench just go in the burnable garbage, and that's it. That's all the only wood trash we have. Have I received ideas for the start to finish stream? Yes, a few people sent emails. I think among them was you, I believe. Nothing decided yet. I 
I haven't even talked to Taransan about it yet, so uh, things here are busy. Things here are busy. We've come into September, you know, and this last weekend, which I had been thinking would be a kind of a quiet weekend, because it's still like just the Labor Day kind of situation, it wasn't. It's chaos again yesterday. So we've clearly moved already now, right into our autumn season. There's going to be no rest for us. <laughs> We're in autumn already. <laughs> and and uh, Nanda, nanda, nanda. It just doesn't stop. The brush has some glue left in it. You've seen me wash it out. I don't wash it, wash it, wash it till every last bit of glue is gone. I think that's too much damage to the brush. I wash most of the glue out, hang it up to dry, and it goes kind of hard. But we use it again every week, every week, every week. There's no chance of it uh, getting moldy or anything. So it just takes a moment to soften up. Somebody else is learning sizing today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As John says, buckle my seat belt. Yeah. The real concern now is Prince. Prince. Priest in the snow is gone, stork in rain is gone, Tago Bay is one of the last half a dozen. They won't be back until the spring. All of our big, big, big popular prints are gone. Our great wave is just, just, just don't even talk about it. All of our popular items are already sold out. Japan in general is going to have a crazy autumn. Now, John here in the, in the stream, John can explain to you what's happening. Tourism to Japan is still in what's called revenge mode, revenge tourism. People that wanted to come for the past three years have all backed up and they're all coming at the same time. How long this is going to go on for, I don't know. It's now been nearly a year. Japan opened up last October and we're still running numbers, here at Mokohonkan anyway, we're, we're running numbers that are double before pandemic. So whether it's going to finally cool down a bit to a normal or whether this is the new normal, I have no idea. John and his travel group there tell me that we're still nowhere near normal. Okay, I think we can go with this. Let's get started. Okay, the paper today is Takenaga. What you're seeing is one third of a sheet of paper. If you imagine this as one third, two thirds, three thirds, the sheet of paper, as long as it's about as big as the screen, I, I don't know what to say. I can't get you one. Here, here's two more thirds of it, okay? This is two thirds of the sheet. It's Takenaga, the largest kind that we get from Iwano-san. It's also the thickest and heaviest kind. This is very, very, very thick paper. Well, by our standards. It's not thick paper by Ukiwe historical standards, but it's thick for us. We wouldn't print those Hokusai reborn prints, so we wouldn't try and print the Great Wave on this. It's too thick. But for images that need color, 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 that's what we use. There are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six woodblock prints made from each of these pieces. And this is Kyoto Journey number six, which ships to collectors October 1st. Don't ask me why I'm still doing this now, September the 11th. Okay, let's roll. I took 12 sheets of the large Takenaga, cut it in three. So we have 36 strips here today for those who feel like counting. And the picture, you've seen it before. If you've been following these streams for the past few weeks, you've seen the picture. It's the girl walking in front of that temple gate with the maple leaves up on top of her and the red leaves all strewn all over the ground. This is the print, that's the print that will be made from this paper. Ok, 
carving now is all done. Kawasaki-san returned her set of blocks to me. I finished the ones that were on my desk. We are ready to roll. John's talking about the, the tourism thing there. There's another aspect to this too that he perhaps has not actually got his thumb on. We're seeing a different pattern of tourists here now in Asakusa from before. I didn't see this over the last uh, autumn and into the spring, but right now we're seeing a very, very different mix of tourists. John's Facebook group there is, I would guess, mostly uh, whatever, North Americans, Europeans, speak it in English on Facebook. We are seeing here on the street every day, far, far, far more Asian tourists than we've ever seen before. So it's not just uh, the West, it's not just uh, John's English-speaking Facebook that is uh, showing demand. China is sending huge numbers of people over here. Uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, there's always been Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, they've always been a part of the mix. But now the bigger Southeast Asian countries and Asia themselves are sending far more tourists. Or more of them are coming to Asakusa. I, I, I don't have any idea. Oh, John's on this then, Southeast Asia, okay. We also ourselves are seeing a pattern that we really haven't seen before here at Mocha Hong Kong, and that's Chinese tourists. I would have said maybe if you'd have asked me this a year ago or something, who's your visitors? They're what we would call in Japanese Obeijin, American, North American type people, European, Australia, that kind of, of part of the world. And we never, ever, ever, ever had Chinese people. To the, we had so few to the extent that when somebody does come in from China, I'm going back a few months and walks around. When they leave, the staff all looks and says, wow, Mezirashi, unusual, man. Somebody actually, a Chinese person actually came in. It was really, really, really rare. We're seeing it now every day, and we're seeing them purchasing stuff. And we've never, ever, ever seen this before. A good part of the reason for that, of course, is YouTube, our main, what's the word, our main promotion, is that the word? Our main exposure method is YouTube, and given that that's not uh, easily accessible in China. Looking good, you know. I've got a good mix, a good thick brush. At the country, country level, yes, Japan and China right now are uh, playing games with each other, of course. The, the radioactive fish issue, <laughs> the non-radioactive fish issue, whatever. But the individual people, uh, whatever. Not so much. It's also, you have to be careful when you talk about types of tourists and how people from each country behave and stuff. It's easy to fall into the, uh, 
oh, people from that country are always like this, and people from that country are always like this, etc., etc. There are patterns that, that come up, and when somebody comes in the shop and fits into one of those patterns, it reinforces your, you know, your, your conception and prejudices about it. But you have to... The reason I say this is because there was... <laughs> There was a couple of guys came in. I think I talked, I might have mentioned it the other day without mentioning what country they're from. There was a couple of guys came in a couple of weeks ago, whatever. They're mid-30s, whatever. Very casual. They're dressed like I'm dressed now. A little bit battered clothes, total casual. Not, not nicely dressed for tourism at all. Whatever. They're dressed David style. So. And they came into the shop. They're in their mid-30s here. One guy's scrolling on a phone, he's, he's looked up, he's looked us up, he doesn't know anything about us, he's looked us up, Woodbot prints, the socks, he's here, bang, comes in, oh, this is the place. He and his friend chat in Chinese for a while, they look around the shop for a minute, then he comes up to me and he asks, i got to be careful, what, what was the phrase he used? They were speaking English, I know. Yeah, he said, where are the investment grade prints? Where are the investment grade prints? Where did the conversation go from there? <laughs> so, <laughs> what should I answer? Oh, whatever, of course, I just chat with him for a while. I'm just telling him we don't have anything like that. There's nothing here, nothing here that we would present to you saying, if you purchase this now for a certain price, X years from now, it will be worth more. There is nothing in our shop that we can honestly say that to anybody. We, we don't think like this. We don't do like this. Someone here is saying all of them, yeah, whatever, from your point of view, but not from me as a shop owner. I cannot and will not ever do that to somebody. And it's, it's true, our stuff is not investment grade. You can't easily sell it for even what you got for it. You bought a print from me yesterday, go ahead, sell it for the same price. What are you going to do? Go to eBay and try and get it? I guess you could sell it, but you're going to have to work on it. So we chatted. There's no nothing. Else. I, didn't, I didn't throw him out or send him to the door, of course. I just chatted with him, explained to him he's in the wrong place. He asked where he could find such prints, and I gave him a couple of addresses of places downtown where they will speak that language, whether the prints he will buy there are going to earn him a ton of money or not, I'm not going to say, but they, I gave him the address of a couple of places that speak that language. Investment grade means he wanted to buy and hold and sell later for a higher value. He didn't want to buy prints for something that were a beautiful object or an interesting object. He wanted to, you know, an investment. He's got some money, obviously. Put it in the bank, you get X percent interest. He's trying to get more. It's a thing, and I'm not even I'm not even knocking the thing, the idea. It just doesn't overlap at all with the way we make woodblock prints. And once I showed him our prints, I pulled two or three out of our rack and showed him that we don't use edition numbers. And that was it. That was it. He he put his phone back in his pocket, and a minute later, he and his friend were gone. No, no hostility, just a slight conversation. But as soon as he saw that there were no edition numbers, that made him understand that this was not the place he needed to be. I sent him to the Tolman Collection down in Shiba Daimon and uh, Mita Arts in, in Jimbocho. I never, ever, when people come in looking for prints in our shop and we don't have enough, I send them downtown to Yamada Shoten, Harashobo, Toshu, Sai, Ebisudo, those kind of places. Nice shops with nice variety. But I sent this guy to Mita Arts. That's a different kind of shop. They speak his language.
Oh no, please don't misunderstand. You know, I'm not. I wasn't hostile to the guy, and I'm not hostile to the idea. I'm not sitting here while this idiot came in. I'm just telling you a story. You know, it is a thing out there. We don't do it. It's just simply his world and our world don't have an overlap. That's all. So I'm not. Uh, I'm not dissing anybody here. So I'm asking about the brush. This is the last brush of its size from Miyagawa-san. I would have got it now. I don't even remember. This has been in our workshop now for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. The day I bought it from Miyagawa-san, I had gone in there looking for a sizing brush that was larger. You know, I had had, I was learning, struggling how to do this, and I had a bunch of water brushes that were about this size, but to do sizing I needed something larger. So I came down to Asakusa here, before I lived here, to Migawa-san's shop, asked him, and he, he had this on the rack, pulled it off, and I bought it, felt it, it looked really, really nice, I felt it, I bought it, so okay, good, good, yeah, tell you what, while we're at it here, can I get another one, so I don't have to oh, use the same one too many times. And he said, no, we don't make those anymore. This is, this is it. I think it's the last one. He goes rummaging in the back or something. I can't remember the details. He came out and said, no, that's it. That's the last one. And then two, three, four, five years later, he was gone. It's not impossibly large. It's sort of a cr cross. It's larger than what people would think of as a mizubake, a water brush. But it's not really big enough to be a sizing brush sizing brushes in general. Well, you've seen them, the one behind me up there to show. That's more of an actual, that's more of a sizing brush. It's Yagi, um, goat. A goat hair brush. Beautiful, beautiful, nice white goat hair brush. This is one of my treasures, this one. And I nearly destroyed it a few years back. It's come back to life, but I made a big, big, big mistake one day. Actually, it's all your fault, because it was a stream. We had done this, do streaming, I went to hang it up, and I guess instead of rinsing it, whatever, I, it, when I went to hang it up, I took this, and I dunked it in the other one here, the one full of hot water. I put it in the hot water tank, went to hang the paper up, and then forgot about it. And all day long, all day long, that brush was dunked, the bottom end of it in the hot water. I came back up and it was it was nowhere near flat. It hasn't come back to life. You can see it's not it's not well it's pretty good actually. It's pretty good considering what it did. It ended up having a super super curve. It must have been screaming all day help help Actually, somebody there said paper makers don't use brushes. They do indeed, actually. You saw the other day on the paper making stream, brushes are very important to them. When they're brushing their paper onto the drying boards, they have many different kinds of brushes. Well, some. They have softer ones, harder ones, larger ones, short hair, long hair. Iwano-san has quite a collection. <coughs> and some of them quite large. But one here, I think we've got one here. That's a paper maker. Where is it? Here, 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 here. here. This would be useful for a paper maker. The hairs are too short. I can't use this for sizing because it doesn't hold enough liquid, which is why it's sitting in the drawer. But this is for a paper maker making like big sheets of gampi, drying the paper on his boards. size feels a bit cool here. I'm not quite sure why.
Hello, different. Have you caught up? I know I'm part way through the video editing. The video that we took that day at the paper making place. I'm part way through editing it for YouTube. I was thinking it would get done over the weekend. That's a fat chance, my God. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Most of my time the next few days now is programming. And it's an unfortunate, you know, the post office has given us, we knew this was coming. The post office has given us a new rate sheet for October the 1st. They gave us a warning about this. We'd known for three, four, five months that it was coming. No problem. We just, we just changed the prices in our rate sheet. Away we go. Don't need to change your shopping cart. Don't need to change software. No. They've made many, many, many changes. These are post-pandemic changes. Things that happened during the pandemic and that have now been finalized. There is no more packet service, e-packet service, between Japan and the U.S. of the A. No more e-packets. It's been cancelled. It was cancelled when the pandemic started and it hasn't come back. We've talked to the girls at our post office, of course, they don't have any idea why. Googling around, it seems the USPS is losing money on packages. They're making money on big boxes or something and on letters, but they're, they're losing money on small scale stuff that is just fits our size. So the USPS is resisting doing this. I guess they're losing money on it. I, have, I don't know the background. Anyway, the, J the Japanese post office has cancelled and eliminated. We no longer will offer this service to you. So big stuff is okay. EMS is okay. The express delivery where we pay 60 70 $80 or whatever for a package, that's up and running. They're competing with FedEx and whatever. Cheap, small packets are cooked. I just splashed some size on my keyboard. One sec. Excuse me, when I showed you that brush, ha ha ha. Oops, chat has disappeared. I've just clicked away the chat. <laughs> it's gone. I clicked something. So I'll clean the keyboard later. So of course we're working around this all through all during the pandemic we've been working around this. We ship bulk. We package stuff in bulk, send it by FedEx, and it gets distributed from there. The place help with the tracking. People buy stuff, they ask for a tracking number, and it's no good sending them that FedEx tracking number because that doesn't go to their house. So we can't send them a tracking number till our box gets finished packing here. FedEx gets it over there, which now takes about a week instead of overnight like it used to. Then our staff in America packages them all up, puts them into UPS, sends it out, beeps them and sends them out. And that's when a tracking number comes alive for the customer. The other part about the post office change that's going to affect my programming is they've rearranged all their zones. They had a zone system where the world was broken up into zone 1, zone 2, zone 3 and zone 4 and the rate sheet matched zone 1, zone 3. They introduced the EMS system some years back and that had different zones. And now they've changed their zones now. So I have to rebuild my entire rate sheet and shopping cart to reflect the post office zone system. And it's all changing on one day, midnight, October the 1st. So I have to get my new software all ready, all tested. All of our customer database, the customer names, have to be converted to the new zone numbers. Not for September 29th, but for October 1st. And we have subscribers. The bill comes up for their next subscription. It knows what print they've got, what zone they're in. And those are all changing midnight on October, uh, no, September 20, uh, 30, whatever it is. So Dave has his little, it's like a Y2K problem. We have to get code in place that uh, all comes active at the moment of midnight, one specific day next week. So the next few weeks, Dave is going to have fun. And then that night, what day of the week is it? 
tell me it's a weekend. Please tell me it's a weekend. How many days in September? 30? 31? Somebody got a calendar? What day of the week is the change from the end of September to the beginning of October? It's 30 in September, Monday. You mean it's Sunday to Monday or Monday to Tuesday? October 1st is a Sunday. It's Saturday to Sunday. Really? Really? No, I mean two answers. Come on. Come on, guys, figure it out. October 1st is Sunday or Monday? So it's Saturday to Sunday. Anybody come into the shop that weekend? Dave will probably not be in the shop that Sunday. <laughs> The girls will come upstairs and just find me gently swinging here. Okay, it's going well. The color looks good. It feels a little bit cool. We haven't got the hot carpet running. I guess that's why. I think I'll have to pull that back up. It, it's a little bit strange for me to feel the, the natural temperature. I I'd first thought a minute ago that the heater had gone off and that the size was cold. No, it's fine. That did happen a few years ago, you know. Somebody plugged in something else. The power went out on the circuit that this thing is on. And I didn't notice. I'm sitting here sizing, 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 but bit by bit by bit, the mix was gradually dropping down to room temperature. At some point, I thought, what, what's going on? What's going on? our time it's 8 30 I think we're okay actually in fact I think I'm working faster than normal what is it it's 8 35 and I'm almost finished the first side whoa Whoa. What's our normal timetable for the... Oh, I know. It's because I didn't cook at the beginning. We had the stuff ready. That's why it's gone quickly. There was no cooking session. We might get a show and tell. I have a dynamite, dynamite dynamite show and tell. We're talking socks off. It's something almost certainly you would have seen before maybe many, 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 many years ago. I don't know. I was looking last night. Yesterday, I know, Afke San was here. You know, the young lady from the Netherlands who, who showed us her prints from the Mila workshop. She's been hanging around here. And yesterday, was it yesterday? No. Two days ago. Saturday. It was a rainy day and she wanted to do museums. So I said, I have a better idea. Come upstairs and let me show you some etchings. So she did. I went back down into the shop and she spent the entire day in our collection room. I flagged a few of them, check this, check this, check this, check this. She spent the entire day in our room. She moved some of the boxes on the floor out of the way and made herself, com made herself comfortable. And she spent the whole day up there. Wait till she gets the bill.
Anyway, the point of the story was that while I was, like, she, she stood there with the whole vast array of this, where to start. So I pulled out a bunch of sticky notes, and I put some sticky notes on three or four things here. And it was while I was doing that, I was pulling this, pulling this. Oh, I remember that. And I pulled out a folder that I haven't seen for a long, 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 long time. That's a nice one. And I flagged it for her to look at. So I remembered, I pulled out that same folder here today. Okay, there is our top half. We have to now flip. And I, there's too many. You've sometimes seen me recently flip it up and throw it over. There's too many here. That's too dangerous. We're going to do the old way of uh, put the two boards together, sandwich it. I don't dare try and flip it by hand. Tempting fate. I might bang a camera cord or two, who knows. What's the password? I can't remember. Yosho! Okay, we now go again, starting with the same sheet, because we flipped it over, this is number one, this is the same sheet that was number one for the top side, we're now going to do the back side. And it's feeling good, it's feeling good and moist, a lot of the moisture from the front side has already come through to the back. We're now going to do the same thing again, and I'm going to keep it heavy, sometimes when the paper is really light and thin paper, by the time we flip it to the back, it's almost like already done. But this paper's pretty thick, so we need another good full coat. And now, almost certainly, I'm going to get in trouble. There's 30 sheets here, and because they are now, they've just been hit by moisture, these sheets are in the process of expanding. They're expanding. And it really would be best just to leave the complete stack alone to let it expand. But we're flipping it, and it's sort of half expanded, and when we put the thing on, it's stretching still. It's really, really easy to get, uh, what's the word, to get some creases here. It's really creasable paper. And if I press too hard right about here, we'll get a crease in that zone. So far, it's looking very nice today. This paper is going to go to Kubota-san tomorrow afternoon. I should have actually done this yesterday because the idea would have been to send it to him today. But uh, I didn't get it done yesterday. My own fault. I set aside time for it, but just didn't get it done.
The glue in the vat, if we turned off the power and just walked away, it would just turn to jelly. It wouldn't turn into like concrete glue that would destroy everything. If I turned the temperature off there, it would just turn to jelly. And then if I came back and looked at the jelly, ooh, look at that, and turned the heat back on, it would melt again. This doesn't go concrete type hardening. It's completely water soluble even after it has uh, gelled up. So it's not like we're dealing with wood glue or something that is going to go hard too much and would then be unusable. It's totally re, uh, rechargeable. It's like the kind of stuff that they use when violin makers, you know, they use the hide glue, the rabbit glue. It's always re-moistenable, re -moldable. You can take it apart. So good. Oh, Don Gokshas here. Good morning, sir. Are you down in Kyoto yet, or are you leaving? No, he must have gone gone yesterday. You're in Kyoto. Thanks for coming around the other day. It was great fun. Great fun. I haven't really inspected the block much yet. Too busy this weekend, but I'm looking forward to spending some time on your block. I know the conversation the other day with uh, our friend Nangaksha, I know it, I was so dazed by that, that print and the block, you know, I was asking him what are your activities here in Japan, but I was really only half listening. I was trying to look at the stream, look at the camera, look at that wood and the print, so I wasn't really listening carefully to his conversation. And after you, after he left, after you left, sir, I, a bit of it played back in my mind that you were here for a tournament, I think you said. I didn't really catch this well when you were chatting with us. It's one a, a very a certain martial arts, and you're here for a tournament. Are you actually now like getting ready today? You've got your suit ready, and it's going to be you know actual. What is it? Because I'm not sure if that came through for everybody else in the conversation either. So I, I certainly for one. I'm sorry. I got to apologize. I missed that part of the content. I'm sorry. I'm really not the professional interviewer. <laughs> there was too many things going on for me at the same time. So if you could fill us in, the celebration. It's a celebration or is it a tournament then? Or it's, or it's a... Anyway, please fill us in with a little bit of this or give us a link to something like that. Because I, uh, I'm sorry, I have to say I missed that part. I'm sorry. No, no, uh, 
No creases yet, but we're waiting. It is sword fighting, okay. Anniversary celebration. Hyo Hyo Taisha Ryu. So this is a big deal. A big deal, okay. I really didn't get this. I have to completely apologize. I'm sorry. I, I, whatever. I was just buzzed with different stuff. I did not get this. I'm sorry. Oh, we get a link. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. I'm nervous about creases. I'm nervous, nervous, nervous.
How many more layers? I haven't been counting. Uh, it's your job, not mine. I think we're somewhere just over halfway through on the back side. So maybe there's, uh, if I was going to guess, I'd say there's 16 left, but I don't know. It's up to you. Question, question, I'm getting a lot of splatter around the work area. You mean like on all around the table or do you mean right next to where you are? Splatter, we don't get that. We're just rub right here. I mean, we don't, you know, I'm not quite sure. Around the table. My God, I've, what can I say? You know, we don't rub that hard or that violently. Whatever, if this was my block and we were carved here, I, I would be rubbing the brush. Well, let's get a brush. Whatever, suppose that we had a block here. I would rub the brush like this around here, around here. And this area would get covered by the brush because we rub off the edge of the board. But other than where I've touched, there would not be any splatter. We don't have that. So I'm not quite sure what you're seeing or what you're doing. It just sounds like maybe you're being a bit more violent than you need to be. I, I'm not sure, really. Have you seen our videos? Have you watched some of the videos where we're printing? Well, we don't fum, fum, fum. We're rubbing across the top of the surface. We don't flip, 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 flip. We're rotating, rubbing, rubbing, and gently sa, 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 sa. Take a look at some of the videos. There's a million videos on our website that show the printing process. Out of time coming up to nine. We're okay. We're going to get this done. Well, someone says a softer, wide painting brush. You don't want a soft brush. We don't paint onto the block. Absolutely. We put pigment on the block and we spread it round. We never paint the block itself. You can't use a block, a brush like this, a soft brush. It's completely impossible. In, in our in our technique. Yeah, the reason you're talking about a soft white painting brush. We don't use painting brushes, we use printing brushes. So I don't know if there's confusion here.
do we show and tell on washi day? I have a show and tell prepared. It's all going to depend on the timing. It's nearly 9 o'clock now. I'll be at this for, I think, about 4 or 5 more minutes. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm sorry. I have one ready. All I can say is, I don't know. Hide glue, how oh no. My understanding of the glue that we're using is it comes from, uh, it'll be things like cow bones and cow hides and stuff like that. It's things that, parts of animals that are being thrown away that have gelatin. It could be stuff like, uh, you know, between what are the things that the ligaments and stuff that connect bones and the bones themselves or the hides. I really don't know. It's clearly animal based. This is not a vegan product or whatever at all. I don't think it's rabbits. There's no rabbit glue here in Japan per se. This will be, uh, it'll be uh, cows, maybe horses. I don't know. There must be information out there about this. This is the product called Nikawa. The, the glue we're using, the brand name here is Pearl Glue, but it's nothing to do with pearls. It's Nikawa. used in many 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 Japanese products there's a type of Nikka was used in food too there there is a you know, gelatins in food this package says do not eat it's the product we've got is from a Japanese company a Japanese factory whether all the raw materials are Japanese I have no idea would they import horse bones from China or something? I kind of doubt it, but I don't know. I think there would be enough cattle and or horses and oxen and whatever here in Japan to cover that. But I have no, no knowledge of that at all. It's just from our point of view, it's up the supply chain. Just, I don't know. baby fried glue salt that's something else that's changed here in Asakusa too since the uh, reopening there's now a kind of a boom right here in Asakusa that wasn't there before of Kobe beef outlets very 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 high priced there used to be one or two small privately run steak places with some guy who had a reputation and he's got a chef's hat and he charges five fifty thousand yen for dinner. 
They've always been around, but now there's, they look like chain stores, Kobe Beef. And there's these, there's like, there's one, there's two in the Shin Nakamise, there's one around the corner, there's three of them that I know of right now, and they're brand new. And whether it's the real thing, or it's a scam, or it's American beef relabeled, or I don't know. These days you can't trust any of that stuff, so I haven't a clue. Kobe beef means after the cow was killed in America, it's shipped through a container through Kobe port and then into Japan or something. Don't quote me, I don't know how this works. <laughs> Do I trust it? No. Does it matter? I don't know. Am I a beef connoisseur? No. I mean, Japan is basically a sort of an honest place, and most of the, the relations you have with people here are honest and straightforward. But it's not all perfect. Japanese people are human beings. There's, there's scams and there's crap that goes on here, same as anywhere. There was one a while ago. I forget what it was. It was some kind of fruit. Some kind of fruit from some specific area had suddenly developed a reputation of being really, really expensive and really, really tasty. And it was here and here in the department stores, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know the story. It's not unusual. <laughs> Some consumer research organization did the count on it. And they counted up, like, the stuff that had been sold in the markets as being this. And the number was, like, 15 times the total productive capacity of that area, you know. So there's an awful lot of wishful thinking going on in these brand names sometimes. You know? So these restaurants around here that say Kobe Beef. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I, I know nothing about this. I'm not here to warn you away because I don't know, but just because it's Japan, you know. Oh, Japanese wouldn't lie about this. It must be okay. Yeah, tell it to the judge. Okay, we are done with the wiping stage here. Now, to make sure I don't get into that same problem I did before of leaving my brush in the hot water all day. I am going to put it in a bag if I can find a bag. I'm just going to slip it inside a bag so it doesn't dry out too much. And I will wash it when I get back. If, I, if it turns out that I forgot and left it, no big deal, I would be able to heat it up again and, and, and uh, wash it out. But the danger of leaving it in hot water is much worse danger than forgetting it like this. So this goes cover goes on, and that can wait till after the end of the stream. Okay, you know what's happening now? Those of you who have experience here, tell the rest of the people what's going on. We're going to move to the next room. First step. The outside camera goes down. We can kiss that goodbye. It is now history. Second step. I'm going to move my power source to the next room. Step three, we are going to undo the main camera here because I can't carry it all together. The main camera is going to go down. This camera should stay and the audio should stay because I am wireless. Main camera going down temporarily.
and step three, the final step, the computer and microphone now go through to the next room. I think we should be okay. You guys are still with me? Take the chat, chat settings, chat appearance, chat size maximum. Now I can read it. Plug in the main camera. If only I had a crew here. Let's see, is that going to come up normally? It's there. Look at this. Signal unlocked. Scene of the crime. One more step. Don't forget the paper. Okay, we are ready to go. I should get the cables out of the way so I don't step on them. Okay, I can sort of see you a little bit in the distance. If you have a specific question for me, you've really got to put it in big caps because I can't see it. Don't type in caps all the time because I can't follow the whole thing. So if there's a real specific question you think I need to see or like the mic is off or something, put it in caps. Other than that, talk to yourself for a while. Let's get this going. Maybe I should zoom out a bit. Can we do that? No, we're outmaxed already. There are th uh, 30 sheets of paper in this stack. 10 original sheets cut in three. They're face down. They're now going to go back to back in pairs. I think I should do it this way around. And although our grippers will take a larger sheet, we only need two of the clips today. Up she goes. Thirty sheets, up two at a time, fifteen hangings, only fourteen to go. The paper has come out well today, you know. I didn't get any creases, I believe. The paper is translucent. I don't know if you can see it. I don't want to fool around with these too much. The paper is translucent. You should be able to see my hand in the back of it there. It's not saturated. If I, you know, I couldn't wring liquid out of this. And it doesn't drip, hanging these sheets up like this. We never get drip, drip, drip. There's not that much liquid in there. Just enough to get that glue all the way through and turn it translucent. And once they're dry, we can't tell visually that there's any change. The paper has become much stronger. Of course, when we touch it, we can feel the different sized and unsized paper, but it doesn't look any different.
I didn't flip that last one. That's not true. I'm sure, I, you mean this one? No, the one up there? I, well, I can't argue at this point. I will find out when I unhook it tomorrow, but I think I did. Just for, for hypothetical consideration, just imagine that it's possible that once in a million times I forgot to do this. Imagine that, you know, impossible situation, but imagine I forgot to do that. So what we would have is we'd have two sheets, one would be face down and one would be face up and they would be front to back. It wouldn't actually matter. The reason I flip one is so that as we hang them up, they are back to back on the off chance that if somehow they stuck together while they were up here, then separating them wouldn't leave marks on the front of the paper. The separation would leave a mark on the back. They actually don't get stuck. I don't have a problem. And this flipping thing is actually just sort of a, a theoretical, let's do it this way in case maybe it... But I'm going to, I'm going to check the replay now that you've said that. And I, I would bet you... Uh, should we put a dollar on it? Whoever it was that said that? Because the, the photo evidence is there on the stream. <laughs> Who is it? I didn't even notice. The one you showed is translucent. Did I flip it first? I don't remember. I really, really, really don't remember. Who was it? I don't know who it was that said this. So what you're saying, you're saying what I did was I picked it up like this, pulled it out, did the translucent thing and then hung it up. I guess I could buy that. Yeah, I could buy that. Maybe, but the bet's still on. Time. What is it? Nine seventeen. Oh ho 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 ho. Nine seventeen. That's not looking good for the show and tell because the show and tell is a spectacular, juicy show and tell today. It's an album of sixteen prints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
we're two thirds of the way through here. I'm not sure. What is it? There's 30. Do I see 30 sheets? There's 36 to show. 10. No. 12. I've forgotten now what's in here. 12 sheets of the large paper cut in strips. Three. That made 36. Did we have 30 or 36? I don't even remember anymore now. I organized it all this morning. We've got now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13 up there. And there's still a deck here. I don't remember what I did. It's Tell you what we could do actually, you know, for show and tell. That book that I want to show you, the album, is really, really spectacular. So uh, let's do this. Let's think quickly here. The room where I'm standing in right now has a lot of other stuff inside it. And recently, the printers over in the printing room have been using the air conditioner there. <coughs> that actually makes their work quite a bit more difficult. The air conditioner blows cold air sometimes quite around the room. So Ishikawa-san right now, she's got her printing station set up with some barriers that stop the direct draft of the cold air from coming over her printing desk. The air flows around the room and she gets comfortable, but the printing desk doesn't get that draft on it. But one downside of having the air conditioner in the printer's room is that the blocks, the blocks that they are using for the print they're making, which are sitting right beside the printing station, get blown by this cold air. And this is fatal to them. When Sugusan was here a couple of months ago, she was doing the Fox Moon print and we hadn't noticed it. Some of the blocks right beside her desk had been sitting there for like a couple of weeks in that environment and some of them split. Not split this way, but split in terms of coming off the plywood backing. So we instituted a rule, and we've, we've had this before, just we'd sort of all forgotten about it. We instituted a rule where the printers don't leave their wood blocks in the printing room. They leave their wood blocks in this room, which is hot and muggy. So, looking over my shoulder here now, I see the full set of wood blocks for the Nikko print sitting in a box over there. Let's look at them. Today's show and tell, we're moving to plan B. Let's do that. What's the time? Where am I? Someone's saying Nikko has been printed. It's happening right now as we speak. Nikko is being printed. I mean, coming in a few minutes up the stairs to grab these blocks and put the next color on. And we're videoing it.
I'm sorry, I didn't realize there's a bunch of you guys that don't know what we're talking about here. There's the Hiroshi Yoshida print Misty Day at Nikko, which Mokohankan is currently making a reproduction of. This is all carved by Taran san, Taran Casey from Wales, who is a new, a new gun in town in the world of traditional carving. And I sponsored this project and he's signed on and he's done the full block set. We don't have it on our website yet because we did test printing, test printing, test printing. And Aimi-san now is moving ahead with what we hope is going to be the first edition printing. I don't have a print to show you today. And the block set here, I myself, I'm not familiar with this block set because I haven't been part of the process all the way along. So let's just flip through here. You're going to see a non-ukiyo-e block set. Ukiyo-e block set will have patterns that fit the outlines carved. This block set, to a large extent, is going to be zones. I can't, I don't have a print to show you, but you can see a wide zone is going to get a background tone. Here we are, another overlapping zone. I'll show them to you in the same orientation. Let's do it that way, that might help. I'll keep the kento at the bottom. So the block we see here clearly is going to be for something up in the area. It won't have the foregrounds. The block on the back of it, you can actually see shapes. Very, very common in Yoshida prints. The same area will come on one block and another block and another block. Taransan has videos about this. He has video part one and video part two showing this block set coming to life. And part three will be the actual printing. That's why we're taking video as we go along. It would be more fun if I had a copy of the print on the left-hand side to show you here, but I just don't. I'm sorry. If I had thought about this in advance. Do I have a copy of the print here in my setup? No, I don't. I'm sorry. It would have been more sense to show you that. If we had the print on the left-hand side, you can see how these blocks match. And I have no idea how many there are. Well, let's just keep, just keep track as we go along. Oh, the signature. That should have been at the end. Hiroshi Yoshida. We're putting the signature on. We are not going to put the seal on. The prints made in his day and age had a signature and a seal. We're going to leave off the seal. We're putting the signature on the same as we do with the Hiroshige reproduction but we're not going to put the seal on because that seems like a forgery. There's no question that what we're doing is a forgery. Of course, it's a reproduction, but to avoid uh, any problems. Okay, this one's different. Let me put it down on the table here. The blocks we've had so far work in the normal way. There's a registration mark and a board and a side mark and the paper goes on top and you print it. Taransan here is trying to save wood. There's a temple in the middle of the block and if he just carved it in the middle of the block we could only get the temple once and once. He's managed to get it twice on the same piece of wood and he's done it by moving the registration marks. They are here and here for this temple. The paper will go in. Oh we've got a sheet, we've got a proof. I didn't know that. The paper will go in here, click, click, print the temple. The printer will then flip the block around, another registration mark here, click, click, and print the temple. We do this all the time. You can't move it down this way, but you can move it up that way. Here's a proof, one of many proofs, oh, quite different. No guarantee this is what it's going to look like. How many blocks? We've done one, two, three, four. There are one, two, three, four, five, six more in the box. My God, we're not even halfway through. So let's just zip along. Here's another way to do that same problem. 
two areas on one block. Look at this. Registration mark here. Print this area. Registration mark again on the other side. Print this area. So these are, they're almost the same area. This is going to be something, uh, I don't know, where are we? Registration marks. Oh no, it's the top. This, that's funny, 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 funny. I had it wrong. Look, 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 look. This registration mark is for that. Put it in the paper registration mark here and print that zone up there. Something in the trees. Turn it round, put it in the registration mark again, and print that zone up in the trees. It's great fun. So he gets two greens out of one block. The printer has to be careful. When you're printing this one, if you bump here, bump, then you will get marks on your paper where they shouldn't be. The printer is not really happy about this. I'm not seeing all the questions. Someone's saying, does it wait to dry? No, the paper never dries while we are making prints. The paper is moist all the way through, start to finish. It may be that we dry it out part way through because it's getting soggy and starting again. Oh, another one. Taransan, he's gone crazy. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We're getting a master class here today. Look at this. Registration mark in a corner. Look at this, what's this? Another registration mark. He is trying to use as much of this wood as he possibly can. Look at that. Let's try and figure this out, what's happening here. Okay, these areas are for the first registration mark. You print this, boom, 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 boom. And he had a little bit of unused wood up there, he's done it. You've got another registration mark here. And you print the area up at the top, what's that for? Oh, it's the temple here. Those are pretty close, you know. Ooh, 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 ooh. He is trying to keep the block count down. We can't keep the printing count down, but you can try and keep the physical block count down. But at some point, it gets more trouble for the printer. You know, you've saved a bit of money. You've saved maybe a hundred bucks by using a, a piece of wood three times instead of twice. But if it's too much trouble for the printer and if it causes uh, damaged prints, then it's not a bargain at all. So it's a trade-off. And looking at this set now, I'm thinking Taransan has maybe, maybe pushed this a bit too far. The thing up top here is the leaves on top of this tree. A gray block. This is one of Yoshida's famous Nezumi ban. A block to print gray on top of all stuff. It prints gray on green, gray on red, gray on everything. Still excavating the box here. <laughs> you can see some of the aspects, you know, the parts of the temple fence. Oh! Oh ho ho! Da, da, dum. Maybe we shouldn't show this. If Taransan's watching today, I don't know. Happens to all of us. I've done it. Do it all the time. This is Ideki. And actually, too, it's, it's not fair to Taransan to look like a criticism. What he may have done was simply, while we were test printing, he could have found out that we needed some more tone on those people. This is something to do with the area where the people are walking at the bottom. And it may have been something, not that he forgot something, but he thought, you know what, the block we're using for this would be better if it was also on top of the people. So this is maybe plan A, plan B, going back to plan B. The kind of thing, if we think about it in advance, we leave it on there so we can take it off easier. But he hadn't done that, and he has to go back and plug it. So it's not so much that it might have been a mistake, it was simply an alternate plan that came up while test printing was on. Two more. Clean one for the ground. And the other thing about this, you know, is we dumped this job on Taransan. Hi Taransan, do a color separation for this print. And I just dumped it on him. 
like go ahead and do it. The guy has no experience at doing this. He's jumped over here from Wales. He studied ukiyo-e printing. Look at this. One, two, three, four colors, all on the same registration mark. They've got to be far enough apart. Our usual rule, you know the rule, you be sambon. One, two, three, and he's put four different colors on one face of wood. That's no bother for the printer. In fact, the printer might be happy here. Get a green brush ready, get a brown, brown brush ready. Green brush in your left hand, brown brush in your right hand, get them all up, put the paper on once, rub them together, and you've, you've halved your printing time for those two colors. Another one. <laughs> and again, this will probably be a change of plan. Oh no, that looks like a mistake. That's a mistake. The other one looked like a change of plans. This one looks like a mistake. He's chopped that off by mistake and said, oops, and gone back to fix it. Happens to all of us. Okay, there we go. As I said, Ayumi-san, she's not here yet this morning. She's coming in today. She's working on the, on the printing of the first batch of these. If all goes well, then we will have this print ready in our catalog sometime in this autumn. Sometime this autumn. I don't think it'll be September, it might be October. We'll see how it goes. Okay, bit of a funny show and tell today. It's not what I had really planned. That other, maybe we should have just stuck with the first plan because it's taken 20 minutes anyway, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. It's Monday. I'm ready for Anusan to come and give me my instructions Hello. for the day. Oh, Afke-san. Hi, we're just signing off here. Hi, hi, hi. Come and say, just poke, poke your face in. We actually can't see. Here Where? we are. Ah, yes. It's on this camera right now. Hi, everybody. You remember Afkisan from the Milab uh, no, follow-up yes, stream. Exactly. So, 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 so. What are you doing here? Printing my uh, designs from the, making editions from the design from so my lab. So, 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 She brought the blocks that she carved up there and is borrowing some space here. Yeah. I was chatting with him about Saturday. You spent your, she spent the day in my room on Saturday. Yes. Uh, that can be in misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me about that. Sorry about that. I was busy elsewhere. She spent the day in my room. Fun stuff, the show. Yes. Really Fun beautiful. stuff. Fun yeah. stuff. A bit overwhelming. Too many. Yes. Yep. Too yeah. many. Too many. So much to see. Only yeah. saw a really small. Part of course. Of course. Yeah. Me. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, so. Okay. Yeah. I better shut this down. Thank yes. you very much. Okay, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. I'll see you on Thursday. I'm going out to Ome on Tuesday. The decision has been made not to try to do an Ome stream this week. I'll be back on Thursday in Asakusa as normal. See you then. Thanks very much. And sorry for the bit of chaos today, but whatever. The work got done and things got shown. Thanks very much and bye for now. Here we go.